Alrighty, physics, let's get into it. We are going to be looking at some conceptual things today. We're going to be looking at some um, big things with electrostatics, and we're going to be looking a little bit at an equation, but we're not actually going to be um, messing with it too much this week. Uh, we're going to be more saving the math side of things to next week. So, first, let's start with the biggest thing that you should probably know from fifth through eighth grade science. Um, and that's about charges, whether they attract or repel, and hopefully you remember the handy dandy opposite charges attract, like charges repel. Whether these like charges are two positives or two negatives, they want to stay away from each other, where opposite charges attract each other. Now mind you, remember we can call these anything, um, the positives and the negatives, um, we just have to remember that the opposite charges are attracting. Which brings us into our fun game from last week, electron field hockey. One of the things I asked you to do was to tell me what color this blue puck was. Um, and most of you got it. Um, if we bring a positive charge near it, you'll notice the electron field lines around it. And let's see if we can actually get it to score. Um, and if we have a positive charge next to this and this thing, this blue puck wants to repel, well, you probably guessed it, that blue puck is actually positive. And so um, we can also test it by getting rid of that. And let's throw in negative. And notice that the blue puck is attracting to the negative, which means that that blue puck has to be positive. It repels from the positive charge and attracts to the negative, so it has to be a positive charge. Alrighty. Cool. Let's move forward. Conductors and insulators. This is something that I regularly have to um, teach kids what they are because you already probably know from just um, having experience with these words. Conductors are things that can easily flow electrons which, which allow them to easily allow electrons to move. Um, electricity to move. Insulators are the polar opposite. They can't uh, allow electrons to move um, and so they don't easily move electrical charge or electricity. Um, so common things, conductors, metal, water, the things you want to stay away from in a lightning storm, insulators, rubber, plastic, glass, all these things have a hard time moving um, electrons and electricity. So moving forward. Look at that, we're, we're flying through this. So this is going to take a little bit more time. This is an electroscope. Um, one of my favorite days of the entire year is giving you these electroscopes and allowing you to kind of experiment with them. Uh, essentially what they are in terms of the build is we have, here let me draw a little bit, yeah red's fine, we have a brass disc up here and then this metal rod right here connects all the way through so this brass disc is connected all the way through and then we have gold leaves. Now mind you these are just pieces of like gold foil. Um, if they were normally sitting, these are apart right now and I'll explain why, but like if they're normally sitting, the gold leaves are just going to be sitting vertically downwards, right? They're just going to be hanging just due to the pull of gravity. So what happens with these electroscopes is, where is my thing? Okay, so is where we bring a, a charge near these electroscopes. So say we bring a really strong positive charge near this electroscope. Now, big thing I want to re recap from last week. The protons and electrons both sit in the atom, but the protons are in the nucleus and the electrons are outside of the nucleus. The electrons have a lot more freedom to be able to move than the, the electrons have a lot more freedom to move than the protons do. The protons kind of sit in place while the electrons can move freely. So when we're talking about moving charge, we're 99.99% .99 of the time talking about moving electrons. Um, and when we move the electrons, we can either have a positive or a negative charge because that, because if I remove an electron from an atom, well, the atom becomes positive because there's more positives than negatives. If I add an electron, it becomes negative because, well, I have more negatives than positives. So when we have a strong positive charge here, these electrons that are able to move in this electroscope, well, what do they want to do? They want to get as close to this positive charge as they can. They're thinking to themselves, hey guys, there's a party up there and we want to be really close to this positive charge. And so all the electrons are actually going to be moving up the electroscope. 
So the electrons from the gold leaves, the brass rod, are all going to be moving up, and they're all going to be piling up on this brass disc because they want to be close to this positive charge. They are being attracted to the positive charge. Now, if the protons are staying put, the protons are staying put while the electrons are moving, well, the protons, they want to stay away from this positive charge, but as the electrons move upwards, that means that there's an excess of positive charge all along the bottom part of this electroscope, and that is the key. So while the, the negatives at the top equal the positives at the bottom, the negatives are just being pulled upwards due to this positive charge, okay? And if we have two gold foil um, pieces right here that now have a whole bunch of positive charges on them, what's going to happen to those gold foil pieces? Well, just like the picture shows, these gold foil pieces are actually going to repel each other. So now these gold foil pieces, while well, my drawings are on point today, these gold foil pieces are going to be repelling each other because we have an excess of positive charges. And these positive charges don't like each other. They don't want to be near each other. And so the same thing would happen if we put a negative charge up here. What would just happen is that the negative charges, well, they would say, I want to get as far away from that thing as possible and move down to the bottom. And then we would just be switched. We would have positive excess charges on the top and negative charges on the bottom. And so this electroscope can tell you if there's charge based off of if the gold leaves are apart from each other or how far they are apart from each other. If we have a less strong positive charge up here, we would have less negatives at the top, which would mean that we would have less positives at the bottom, which means these leaves wouldn't be as far apart. So the more that the gold foil um, leaves are apart also tells you how much charge is up there. Now this is really something hard for me to explain without actually physically having one um, because they're all in school or, or allowing you guys to all experiment with them. But for right now, um, it's more the conceptual side that I'm looking forward to uh, having you kind of retain. Okay, let's move forward a little bit. So, law of conservation of charge. Um, this is starting to be a really big theme. If you haven't realized in physics, we had conservation of energy, we had conservation of momentum. Um, guess what? We got conservation of charge as well. So charge in a closed system just can't just go away or be created. Um, it has to stay the same. Um, and so, say we have two metal spheres, one that has negative three elemental charges and negative seven ele elemental charges. Now remember, an electron is one elemental charge. So in, what we're really saying is that this um, sphere right here, we'll call this sphere A and sphere B. Well, sphere A has, has three electrons excess on it, and sphere B has four, five, six, seven um, elemental charges on it. Now, this, these three would actually be kind of spaced out in the sphere. That's fine for right now. Um, my drawing isn't perfect. Um, now, if we have these two spheres and we force them together, now mind you, that would be hard because they're two negative spheres. So we, yeah, we push them together till they touch, and then we allow them to separate. What's going to happen to the spheres? Now, you might have already, already think what, what might happen. It's pretty self-explanatory. We have a negative 10 elemental charges total. Um, what's going to happen is these two, uh, two electrons from this sphere will actually go over to the, to the other side to make them completely balanced at negative five elemental charges each. So they're going to balance each other out, but notice that the negative five on each, whoa, still has the same amount that it started with. So if we started with negative 10, we're gonna end with negative 10, but now they're both going to have negative five each, okay? Okay, this is where the equation comes into play. Now don't stress, we are not going to actually be dealing with the equation um, this week. Um, we call this equation Coulomb's Law. And the reason why we have this equation is because you've heard me use the term attract and repel quite a bit um, so far in this unit. Well, attracting and repelling is just words for a, a term that we've already done, which is force. And most, these forces on a charge um, can
can be quantified, and the only thing that we really need to know about the charges is how much charge they have and how far they are apart. And so that's where this equation comes into play. So we have the force electrostatic is equal to K, which is a constant, which we'll look at in a second. Q1, Q2, which is our two charges. We use Q for charge, and R squared, uh, which is the distance between these two charges. So at the electrostatic force in newtons, Q1, Q2 charges in coulombs, R is the distance between, this should be um, lowercase, um, once again in meters, which seems very um, obviously huge compared to the size of these electrons or um, protons that we're dealing with, but it's still in meters, base SI. Um, and then K, which is our electrostatic constant, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared divided by Coulomb squared. Now this is on your reference table. You don't need to remember that. So you should realize that this equation looks a whole lot like equation we've already seen, which is this one right here. This gravitational equation looks basically identical to the electrostatic equation, right? The force due to gravity is g, the gravitational constant, the two masses of two planets or two large objects, um, and the distance between the centers of those two large objects. Notice it's the exact same thing, but now instead of masses, we have charges, we have a different constant, but still a constant nonetheless, and then the difference between the two. But the major point that you have to remember, the big difference between these two equations, is that gravitational force can only be attractive. Electrostatic force can be attractive or repulsive. So now we have to start thinking about, well, is the force that we have here, is it pulling the objects together or is it separating them out? because this one can either be pulling things in or separating them outwards, whereas the gravitational force can only be attractive. And last but not least, so just to describe the relationship between this equation right here, um, force electrostatic, we have the two charges and the, the distance between them squared. So if we're looking at the actual electrostatic force, Fe, Sorry, where is it? Down here. Fe and the distance, which is in R. These two have an inverse squared relationship. So as the distance, as two objects get further and further apart, their electrostatic force is going to be decreasing, but it's also going to be decreasing exponentially. And so we have a graph that looks a little something like that. Or actually, there shouldn't be an arrow on there. <coughs> Um, and that's okay. We'll get rid of the arrow. That's fine. Alrighty. Um, this is where we're going to pause. This was a little bit longer of a lesson than we usually have. Uh, we're going to be looking at some conceptual questions this week on a lot of these different things. Um, and then we'll get into the math of it next week. Alrighty. Uh, hope all is well, and I will see you all hopefully soon. All right, bye guys.